Hey there, in this video, I'm gonna put my multitasking skills to the test because I'm gonna show you how I edit my YouTube videos with Premiere Pro and I'm gonna show you an editing technique that's gonna help you to kind of power through your material and get your edits done a lot quicker and simpler. So I've been using this method for my YouTube videos, short films, music videos. It works great on any type of content really. So if that sounds interesting, let's head into Premiere and I'll guide you through this process step by step. So let's go ahead and start with our A roll because there's a couple of things we need to have set up before the magic kind of happens. So what I like to do, I like to highlight my A roll folder like this. Then let's head over here and hit Control or Command N on your keyboard to create a new sequence. I'm gonna name it e A roll sift because we're gonna do our culling or sifting of our A roll on this sequence. So yeah. Since we had the A roll folder selected, the sequence, the A roll sequence ended up inside that folder along with the footage. And that's just a little trick that will help you to keep everything more organized and a bit more tidy. Now let's select the first and the last clip in the folder by holding down shift and then grab the first clip and drag them all to your timeline. If you don't do it like this, for some strange reason, they oftentimes end up in a, some sort of random order. I have no idea why, but trust me, grab the first clip and it would be all right from there, okay? Now, I have a custom preset, but if you're not planning on changing your aspect ratio or slowing down footage, then you can let Premiere decide the best settings for you. For this part here, I'm gonna keep my existing settings. Sorry, Premiere, I know you're only trying to help. Now, once we have our A roll on the timeline, I usually scrub to the first part of the video where I hold up my little color checker just to make sure that white balance and framing and everything looks okay. If there's something slightly off, it usually gets a bit distracting throughout the rest of the edit. So in this case, we can see that there's some black bars on the side of the frame. So just let's go ahead and punch in to maybe 103. And since we're cutting a bit of the top and the bottom of the frame with a 2.1 aspect ratio, let's adjust the framing a little bit as well. This looks, yeah. And maybe just do a quick tweak on the highlights and contrast and maybe add a little vibrance as well. Then I just copy those settings by hitting Control C on that clip and highlighting the rest of them like this and paste attributes. And now we have all our correction done to all of the clips and everything is pretty much ready to go. Now let's create a second sequence and I usually call it something like main because this is the timeline or the sequence where we're actually gonna build our finished video on. Let's drag the A roll sequence down below our main sequence like this. And now the fun begins. Let's expand the audio track by double clicking on this place here. And now we can see our waveforms way better. And the waveforms is telling us where we made mistakes or where there's silence in between different takes. And this can help us move through the uh, content or the, the material a lot faster. So we can see that this thing here is our intro. And uh, what I like to do, I just put the playhead at the beginning of the intro and hit Control or Command K to make a cut. And then just move the playhead back here to the end of the clip and hit Control K again. And now we can move that clip up to video track number two. And this kind of helps me with two things. It helps me find the selected clips uh, if I'm scrolling back and forth but it also allows me to kind of rate clips. Sometimes I do multiple takes on something like an intro and I can kind of grade the takes by placing them higher or lower up from the, the main track, so to speak. So if I have a really good take, then I might place that up on track number three. And if I have a mm, pretty good take, that usually ends up on track number two. And that makes it easier to just go back and, and try different intros or parts when you're editing later on. And from here on, I just move it 
up to the main timeline so we can start building our video. And with that done, let's continue. And I know that this is the next part where I start talking about the product, but I do remember making a mistake the first time. So by looking at the waveforms here, I can see that this one here is the one that I made a mistake and did a retake later on here. So let's cut the good one and move that up here and place it after our intro. Voila. Let's go ahead and do one more real quick here. like so up there boom done so with the help of the waveforms we can move through our footage so much faster and we're not bringing any unnecessary silent parts or anything so by the time you add your thank you for watching you already have your rough cut done on your main timeline basically can I give you guys a little bonus tip on top of this right now? So whenever I'm doing a take and I felt that take felt really, really good, I usually tap my microphone two or three times like this. That shows up on the waveforms like a giant spike. So it's super easy for you to find that specific take with those giant spikes on the waveforms. And I use the same method for all my B-roll footage or if there's a B or C camera or footage from a different location, everything gets its own little sequence and timeline. And just like we did with the A-roll footage, we highlight the correct folder to make sure the sequence files ends up together with the footage uh, that's actually on it, just to keep everything a bit more organized and easier to get a, a quick overview of things. And don't forget the rating system that we talked about before by moving your selects up to track two or three, depending on how juicy and how epic they are. Sometimes you may have two similar takes of something, but you wanna use the best one at the beginning of your video. So you know the one on track number three is the one that goes first in your video if you wanna front load it and have all the the, the juicy stuff up front. And from here, it's pretty straightforward. I usually go through my A-roll to make sure there's no long breaths to cut those out along with the ahs and mms and things like that. And I try to just do quick straight cuts on those things before I start adding in a B-roll because sometimes I've ended up spending a lot of time making a really nice looking J-cut and then it just ends up being covered by B-roll anyway so yeah i usually like to to uh, add some b-roll and then if there's any segments where i want to do a j cut i spend time on that then i don't think you need to know much more about this editing technique if there's any questions just uh, leave them down below and i'll get to them as soon as i as i can well with that said happy editing and i hope to see you in another video soon. Take care. Bye.